All right, everybody. Welcome back to uh, an in-person meeting. So uh, I guess they got this hammer here. So I'll a club or whatever it is. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, we have a quorum, so all alternates can vote. Um, if we when we get to that part of the agenda, thank you all for being here. I uh, appreciate your support. Um, so do I have a request or a uh, approval of the agenda? Uh, somebody nominate to approve the agenda. Barb, anybody second? Okay. All right, thank you very much. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. okay, very good, thank you. Public comment for items not on the agenda. Any count, any uh, committee members, anybody in the public? Not seeing any, we'll move on. Approval of the minutes. I uh, have a motion to approve. Uh, uh, David Z, I'll move to approve. Thank you, David. Appreciate you. Thanks for those being online. Uh, do I have a second? This is Tony, second. Thank you. All right, Kathy's got it. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Okay, no opposed, no problem. There we uh, again, thank you guys online for, for being there. I appreciate it. Uh, we miss seeing your smiling faces, except for David, of course. But uh, <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just had to find somebody to pick on that wasn't here that could hit me. So there you go. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, financial reports. Um, Lisa on? Or yep, I'm here. Oh, okay, thank you, Lisa. All right, Lisa Corey, finance manager for the PPRTA. Sales and use tax that I'm reporting is for the month of June. We were above the monthly budget by $378,586 or 2.8%. The total received for the month was $13,863,985. June of 24 revenues were below June of 23 revenues by $7,055 or negative 0.1%. Anyone have any questions? Um, Lisa, as we, um, anybody else have any questions for Lisa? As we go into the budget prep piece, um, I'd like to ask, and, and it, if it's just for me, then don't do it, but, um, what I'd kind of like to ask for as we as we're beginning to wrap up this year and PPRTA two is ask the member governments to give us an update on where they are with RTA one projects that are still open. Um, I know that some of it is catch up, some of it's warranty, and I at least I anticipate some of that, and I know that. Mark Shuffle is is still working because we're funneling money into it. But I just kind of like, I think we owe it to the citizens to be able to account for why some PPRTA projects are still open 15 or 20 years after they started. And um, so I just, it doesn't have to be a long drawn out deal, but I think that we just would like, there's not very many of them, but I, I think we ought to, as we go into the budget session at some point, at the appropriate time, be able just to review those RTA projects and where they are, so we're comfortable with them. Is that yeah, I would support that request. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd support that too, Jim. Great idea. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions for Lisa? Hey, I, uh, I just have a quick question, Lisa, for you. Uh, so, so when you do the annual budget projections, let's say for twenty, I can't believe it, twenty twenty five already. Uh, and, and I love the way you were within zero point one percent. So you nailed. In a good way, you nailed the uh, the June projection uh, 24 versus 23 over budget. But my question really is, when you assemble the budget, do you take, for example, the August, uh, is the August of 2025 going to be a number that you derive? Or do you go to the member governments, kind of this is to Jim's point, uh, and ask them to, uh, to tell you what they think your August of 2025 revenues are going to be? Uh, again, or are you creating that from scratch? Just wondering how you derive your budget. Um, no, I create it. So I use historical data for okay. what the budget, how much we actually collected and what percentage of that fell into what months and then use mm -hmm. that percentage for whatever the new budget is. Okay. 
No, that's a uh, that's a good answer, and I like the answer because you're using historical data projecting forward. It's not just a straight line, uh, right. or you're not just taking uh, Manitou's as great a town as they are. You're not just taking their word for it. We think August of next year will be this number. You are do you you're doing it specifically for this, and that's good. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No further so questions. You're running, you're running for mayor in Manitou, David. <laughs> <laughs> I don't live in Manitou. I'm so I wish I did. <laughs> All right, Lisa, how about the budget calendar? All right, so that should be in your packet. Um, today, we're just presenting that calendar, um, and then we would send it to the board if the CAC recommends to do so. So that would be at um, next Wednesday's meeting. Um, then we start collecting all the information, putting this together for, for a public hearing. And I mean, all of these dates for from last year are within two days of the exact same that they were last year. Okay. So. Great. It's a great opportunity to start looking at what we've done um, and and what's ahead of us. And so we we'll look forward to this process. Thank you. Any questions on lease on the budget calendar, Rick? Uh, so I have a motion to approve the budget calendar and recommendation to the board. Thank you. Uh, and, and Brandy, thank you very much. All right, so all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll present this calendar to the board next week. All right, uh, capital projects, item number 6A, City of Colorado Springs. All right, hey, Ryan, Ryan welcome. Hey, Ryan Phipps, filling in for Gail this afternoon. I have seven contracts to present. The first contract is for the motorway bridge rehabilitation, utilizing our bridge maintenance on-call contract. Uh, the work will involve rehabilitating the bridge deck and uh, evaluating and repairing the approach slab. There's a settlement there, uh, and then we'll be topping the deck with a water waterproof sealant there with the polyester overlay. Uh, we're requesting that the, the PPRTA approve the contract with Wildcat in the amount of $1,249,900. $26.36, and the map is included with that packet. The second contract is for the sidewalk infill program or the pedestrian and school and neighborhood pedestrian improvements as it's identified with the um, RTA accounts. Uh, this is utilizing the 2019 on-call uh, process that we, we advertised and selected um, firms in a number of different areas, specifically uh, FHU in the construction management services area. They provided the construction management and inspection services for the first half of the year for the sidewalk infill program. And this is a change order to their task order in the amount of $199,995 to extend their services for the rest of the year. The third contract is a grant match project. This is um, the city received a grant from the S Safe Streets and Roads for All program uh, to develop a safety action plan. We've previously completed a safety and equity analysis. This safety action plan will ultimately um, allow the city to be eligible for additional grant funding for traffic safety improvements. Uh, there were five proposals received. One consultant was selected that would be Olson, and the city is requesting that the RTA approve a contract with Olson in the amount of 360000 and the PPRTA share is $90,000 of that contract. The fourth contract is for the Hancock Sidewalk Multimodal Improvements. Uh, initially, this, the city received a grant in the amount of about $1 million to, um, to provide this multimodal service between the Sand Creek Trail and Academy. Um, Unfortunately, that wasn't enough funding to complete all the work, and we pursued another grant, received another grant for a million dollars, and with that, we we're able to provide an accessible route through the Boychuk intersection, which is actually uh, King Supers at Hancock and Academy. Uh, that project, that particular intersection, has some really difficult accessibility issues, and we we're able to, with this additional grant, um, construct an accessible uh, crossing of Boychuk. And so with the additional grant and the additional work, 
this is an additional uh, amount of scope for Stantec to provide. So we're requesting that uh, the PPRTA approve this contract in the amount of $119,940.50 with Stantec Consulting Services to incorporate the additional scope of work at the Boychuk intersection. Brian, I got a question. Just, just uh, isn't that intersection where there is a transit a hub or a transfer station there is that is th is that at hancock or is that a more up up the road land may be better able to answer that question fully but my understanding is that the future transit hub is identified to be in that approximate intersection hancock and academy area okay so accessibility between the trail and the intersection is important okay yeah great all right thank you yeah go ahead carlos yeah, Carlos Pettis with the Colorado Springs CTAB. Uh, I did have a question about this project. I think I'd asked this before when it came before the uh, uh, committee here, and it wasn't clear. Um, is the uh, the work that's being done being both on just on the north side of the project, uh, Cassane Creek uh, crosses Hancock, or is there going to be some treatments for sidewalks also on the south side, on both sides here? If you look at the project um, uh, map, it seems to be ambiguous as to whether or not sidewalks are being addressed on both the north and south. And I, and that was just a question about the project. Yeah. What is the scope of the project? My my understanding is that the the scope of the project is to provide that access all along the south side of Hancock between Sand Creek Trail and Academy. So so it wouldn't be on the um, you know, there's that apartment complex there. It's not on that side. It's on the um uh and I guess we make sure I got the orientation right, but it'd be on the south side. It would be a where where uh, the industrial area. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, you, you realize that's an industrial area. That's a, there's a, a residential area there, and there's a lot of this. By the way, I work in this area, and there's a high number of pedestrians and cyclists in this area, and they're on the residential side uh, where the old landfill used to be. And so it's kind of uh, interesting that uh, we're putting in sidewalks in the industrial side of this uh, particular area here. And that's why that was the reason for my question. Put the sidewalks where the pedestrians are. That would be my recommendation um, but if it's only on one side and it's the south side then then uh, that's the answer thank you all right all right thank you uh the fifth contract i have to present the, the next three are all trails uh projects so this the fifth one here is for the legacy loop the pikes peak greenway this is to construct about half a mile or convert about half a mile of trail to the standard concrete trail and breeze um, adjacent running shoulder. And this is on the Pikes Peak Greenway uh, south of Uenta, between Uenta and um, Mesa or Cache Food or whichever you call that particular road. Uh, we solicited the work as an invitation for bid and ultimately selected Even Pricer to perform this work. We're requesting the, that PPRTA approve the contract with Even Pricer in the amount of $542,424. Yeah, go ahead, Carlos. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't didn't understand. Uh, okay, so from the um, the the Legacy Loop Trailhead that's at Fontanero um, and uh, Recreation Way, uh, of course, it's concrete there. It ends at that bridge, and so would the, then then my understanding then would did it be concrete all the way down to Mesa Avenue? Uh, you know where the pickleball courts are. Yep. So um, so this would be continuously concrete all the way through. That's the to Mesa. That's my intent. That's my understanding of the intent here. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. The sixth contract that I have to present is for uh, a, a payment to Colorado Springs Utilities. This is a project that's being done in coordination with utilities uh, along Monument Creek. They're stabilizing Monument Creek at the Cottonwood um, Trail intersection. And, oh no, I'm sorry, that was a different project. This one is at Mesa Road. So another joint project with utilities and parks. Um, parks or utilities is doing a creek stabilization project at Mesa or Cash Laputer, whichever you, you call that particular crossing by CC. And the parks uh, department is going to be contributing $500,000 to the project in order to provide that underpass at Cash Laputer. Um, the request is for PPRTA to approve the $500,000 expense to contribute to CSU's project at that location to provide the additional trail amenities. 
Go ahead, Carlos. Yeah, sorry for all the questions here. It just uh, wasn't clear from the memo here. As you see in the, uh, I'm looking, referencing the um, uh, the location map here, you can see that there's two portions of the Pike State Greenway. There's a portion on the west and a portion on the east. Um, and the east one is where, you know, the CC side of things. So the underpass um, is is on the uh, uh, east side there, uh, where Mason and Cashel Cruder, is that's the one you're referring to, yeah, the underpass, right? right. Over on the west side, um, I, I see that there's some indications here that there's, uh, you know, part of the project boundaries here. As well. Again, just reiterate what's going on there is uh, on the west side towards the freeway side. What's happening? The here? west side is actually in connection with the previous um, contract. That's that's the Pikes Peak Greenway extension. Contract, oh, 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 okay. Contract okay. number five. Uh, is any are there any uh, on uh, any street? Uh, so this would not include any uh, sort of at grade treatments. Uh, this is just purely stormwater get under Mesa there on the um, west side. I'm sorry, east side. The trail will go under the east side. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I, I just at the I, it just is again. It was just clarification. If you had an opportunity, I I would just suggest that you know two location maps for both these projects. So. We don't inadvertently conflate these two projects. There's this yeah. stormwater project uh, that's on the east side, uh, but over on the west side is an, another project that we're going to be voting on. And there's, um, you know, uh, that's uh, it would be helpful, I think, to just separate those two, right. just so it's not uh, not ambiguous or confusing here. Uh, all right, thank you very much. Thank you. Go ahead, Brandy. Aren't they both trails, Brian? I mean, I know yes. that CSU is doing what they're doing, but we're voting on trails. Correct. Trail only. So Carlos, there are both trails. So the storm water component, Colorado Springs Utilities is taken care of, but while they're there doing the work, the city is partnering with them so that they can build the trail in the same at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, I know I understand. Well, first of all, the, the memo was was not clear. I'm going to just say that much. I, by the way, I write this all the time. I'm there. I was there on Saturday. I was there just a few minutes ago. So I'm quite familiar with this area. And it's like, oh, we're doing something on the west side for this project here for stormwater. And um, and then and, and really, that's not the case. All we're doing is concrete all the way to Mesa Road. But if you look over there further south, um, there's some work that's being done as well. Um, that's uh I presume is part of this this term water project. So yeah, with the red lines on here, it just wasn't clear what the project boundaries were and what we're seeing as far as Mesa Avenue is concerned, as far as going over or going underneath it. So I just wanted to make it understood or clear. But no, no, it's but they're both Pikes Peak Greenway. Um, the uh, uh, bicyclists use the west side typically to stay way off the off the breeze. It's a little cleaner. Yeah. To be to be clear, contract five is addressing the west side, north of Mesa, turning that into a concrete trail. The east side is contract six, which is partnering with Colorado Springs Utilities to provide the underpass underneath the Cash Laputa Bridge. And, 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 the south, and the south side, south of Mesa, what's indicated in red, what is that? Which project is that? It's just a general box of the specific area. Okay. All right. It's a general box. Thank you. All right. Seventh contract Mr. is Mr. Chair. We do have the uh, on hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry. Who had their hand raised? We did. Uh, uh, that would be me, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I actually had a question about the very first one. So if you want to kind of crank through your last one here, Ryan, that's fine. I'll just go back to the motorway question I had. I can do it now. All right. Thank you, David. Okay. All right. Seventh contract is the Sinton Trail improvements. This is to provide to convert the existing asphalt trail to a concrete trail. Uh, between I-25 and Garden of the Gods of Sitton Trail. Um, the particular contract here is to finalize the design and create construction-ready bid package. And uh, BASIS has an on-call contract to provide these services. And the city is requesting that RTA approve the change order with BASIS partners in the amount of $68,905 to complete the necessary documents to advertise that project for construction. And the map there is following the memo showing the extent of that project. Okay, David, your question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, uh, Ryan, a great overview. Uh, I, I love the work you're doing. I had a question for you though, back on your very first one. Thank you. 
Yeah, the motorway bridge. Uh, I support doing work on the bridge. Uh, uh, the only comment, and I hate to sound a little crabby about this, but but there's so much work going on. That's usually a good thing. Uh, over the Labor Day weekend, I, I couldn't help but notice we're trying to come up from uh, from 115 from the south. Uh, and as you know, the county has got a lot of work going on on Academy and I-25. Uh, CDOT has work at Academy and I-25. Uh, they're by the, uh, the Sam's Club and uh, Walmart. And then, as you also know, CDOT's working on the Nevada Avenue improvements. They had that lane restricted down to one, one lane on a major arterial. And then you folks have, of course, the great work you're doing on the motorway to home one. Uh, the, the, uh, my point is, I guess, is that, uh, that, that or, and, and, and I know this is, well, maybe it's not by coincidence, all four major approaches to this entire city uh, were highly restricted over Labor Day weekend. Uh, I know they were doing their very best and work is moving along well. But uh, I guess my question is, can you help me understand there was no indication about the timing of the work on motorway? I guess what I wouldn't want to do is to re-restrict, if that's the right word, re-re-re-restrict motorway if and when all this great work gets done, because there are four major projects and there are zero really good ways from the south to get into this entire city when you have major restrictions going on in all directions. What's your timing for the motorway project, I guess, and how does that relate to at least in this specific case, the Nevada CDOT work and the other work that city's doing on Tejon Street. Yeah, I can speak to all the work that's being done by the city at Nevada and Tejon. Uh, the contractor that was selected for this work to provide the motorway bridge rehabilitation will work with the contractor and their traffic control. So they will be subject to um, SEMA's uh, contract or their, their traffic control on South Nevada and South Tejon they will not introduce um, a new like phase of, of traffic. Thank it you. Be, it will be a part of what they're doing. And we've we've informed Wildcat that they are to be subject to what SEMA has and their timing will be subject to when SEMA um, can allow for that particular roadway to be closed for this work to take place. Okay, that, a good answer. Yeah, yeah, I was just amazed that the media really didn't pick up much on the uh, uh, the the four-way traffic restrictions over the holiday weekend. If they're working with the SEMA folks, that's fantastic. Thank you. I plan to support it. I'm good, uh, Mr. Chair, with the answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any questions? If not, I do. Um, <clears throat> Brian, just uh, taking, when I started looking, good to see that you're working, finally begin to work on some trails and sidewalks and spinnies up. But just taking a very brief scan at the financial report, there's about $12 million in just two programs for sidewalk and bicycle bikeway improvement uh, programs. And um, so I guess my question is that we're coming into a budget season and it's time to add more money to those pots. What's the plan for the balance of 12 million that's in the pedestrian safe way uh, um, sidewalk, sidewalk fill-in, bike improvements and stuff. That's a lot of money. Um, and then you guys, I, I'm assuming, have a plan? Todd may be able to help me answer, but there's there's a number of encumbrances that are on our side that don't show as spent in a project. So I would have to dig into that and look into those, prop, into those particular programs to give you a better idea of what they're ant anticipated to be spent on. Okay, so I just, don't have that information off the top of my head right now. So just a heads up, going into the budget process, you're adding more money to these pots. I'm going to ask that question. Okay. Um, just kind of so we have a feel for that's a lot of money. Um, and um, I'm glad to see we're finally spending some. Uh, and I'm sure you've been spending some along the way, but um, just, just a curiosity question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other comments for the city on uh, their projects? Uh, I have a motion to make a recommendation to the board to approve the city's request. Oh, friends, a motion that we accept the safety Thank you, Carlos. Anybody else? Second. This is Tony. I'll second it. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Ryan. All right. Uh, next on the agenda. Um, City of Colorado Springs Transit Services. Ms. Land. 
Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Line Rail Transit Services Division Manager. Um, in your packet is Transit's monthly report for information. I would like to um, lead you to the second page um, in this report. Oh, by the way, this is our first attempt for uh, ADA accessible uh, report this month, and we appreciate PPRTA staff members guiding us through this process. So the format might look slightly different, but the information is the same uh, in the report. Uh, July was the first month that we were able to provide free fare this year. Um, the ridership, unfortunately, was 2% lower in July 2024 compared to the same month last year. Because this is the fixed route in, uh, ridership information, and we were not able to were not able to um, tag each individual and find out the reason. So we went back to prior years about zero fare. One of the reasons that we could um, think of is last year we started zero fare in June. We were able to provide three months of consecutive uh, three fare three months of zero fare last year. Compared to this year, we we only have approval to provide zero fare for two months in July and August. So that timing might have had some impact because people were already well informed walking into July because they already had one month of zero fare in June last year. So we're speculating, but um, so therefore we went back to our um, prior year information. We looked at the months prior to the free fare versus the months the first month in, um, free fare. So 2022, we were able to provide one month of free fare in from, uh, free fare in August. Ridership on fixed route increased from July to August by 39% on fixed route and 35% on paratransit. 2023, we were able to provide three months of free fare. So May to June, that ridership increased 41% on fixed route, but decreased by 9% on ADA paratransit. This year, June to July, we saw 44% increase on fixed route and 13% increase on paratransit. So looking at fixed route side, first year 39%, second year 41, this year 44%. So we we did see a positive increase year after year um, from fare charging to first months of free fare. Um, however, we still, contribute this 2% decrease to, again, the word getting out, people know it's free, let's try the transit system. Um, so we think that's a majority of the reason for the decrease. Um, overall, on the next page, year-to-date information, uh, we still saw a pretty positive trend there, considering July was free and June was fair charging compared to last year. We saw 11.3 ridership per revenue service hours this year compared to uh, year to date by July compared to 11.9 year to date ridership per revenue service hours from last year. Also included in your packet is our transit highlight. We have one item to highlight this month. We have completed our public process for the proposed fall service change. We received a lot of public comments either through social media or um, people calling in, and we were able to summarize and keep track of all those comments. In general, the comments are positive in support of the changes that were proposed. However, there are a lot of additional service requests, uh, frequency, extending service hours, and also some specific route alignment information. So we track every single comment in our comment system, and we actually are working on our spring service change incorporating those comments. For the ones we can improve in the upcoming service change, we, in we include them. For the ones we cannot, we keep it in the system and review them every time when we have a service change. So that's our monthly update. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Lynn? Barbara? Lynn, I just wondered on your last comments, are there particular recurring sectors of the community that have the most comment or adjustment? 
um, yes, um, extending service hours um, we, on the weekend is a very strong, consistent request that we see year after year. Um, and we are considering those in our um, upcoming spring service change next year. We also see a lot of requests for um, northeast part of town along Powers Corridor around Penrose Hospital. We also see a lot of comments about uh, Northgate area from employers, hospitality industry, in employees not able to get to their workplace from down south. We also see comments connecting between uh, south part of town from PP PPSC, south campus all the way to north campus. So it's pretty widespread. And also another common theme is the frequency. Um, people really strongly want more frequent service. Um, and unfortunately, another one is people actually feel the pain of service cuts due to driver shortage, due to vehicle situations. So those are all um, consistent theme that we receive. Just one other, just off the cuff question would be, I know we have a lot of controversy about the new amphitheater up north, the noise issues, but are there any special runs or services going up to that sector when um, there are uh, events? Not currently. Uh, we reviewed our service options when this proposal was first brought up a couple years ago, and we reviewed uh, the this, this same question again recently. Uh, currently, that travel pattern doesn't really fit in our service plan. Um, if we were to provide service to the theater, it's um, it's not on the regularly scheduled day that fits in our service hours. We have to basically extend the service hours for those particular days. And also, if we only have one or two buses serving the theater, then take people to the rest of the system that already stopped running. The buses already stopped. So in order to make that couple routes successful, you have to have the network to run about the same time so people can connect to their destination. So to, to make one trip and extending the, the hours for those particular days, um, we currently do not recommend that. But things could change down the road in the future. That's good information. Thank you. Welcome. Um, thank you for you. You answered my question that I had, and that was comparing the first month of zero fares um, and whether this month's July mirrored last year's uh, June. So, you know, was it, it was comparable. So I appreciate you doing that. So that was kind of my question. So thanks. Thank you. Any other questions for Lan on transit? Good job, Lan, as always. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> board policy 34. Um, let me just kind of make a comment here. Um, when we get through C through H, uh, the, the, the change in those um, um intergovernmental agreements are all the same and so as we get into this discussion about 34 and then the subsequent changes to the iga uh, when we get to the iga specifically um i'd like to make it clear i i don't see i've talked to rick about this the board will probably have to approve each one of them individually what I would like to do for the concept of time is that that unless there are specific questions about an individual IGA, um, I would like to make sure that in our statement that we've reviewed each of them and we're making a group recommendation to the board, they will probably have to look at each one individually and vote on it. Um, but I would like in this instance of time to just make a general one. So uh, just think about that. If you have an objection to that, when we get to that part, let me let me know. So um, item 7B, uh, policy 34. Rick, you want to start it off? Yes, Mr. Chair. As uh, the CAC has seen in the memo, um, 
the board attorney, Jennifer Ivey, uh, discovered uh, an error that I slash we made three years ago in 2021 when we were uh, developing the what's now called the matrix. Um, the uh, <clears throat> the new proposal of the state and federal discretionary grant match fund uh, that would go into the regional collaborative projects for the PPRT3, and which eventually did, the, the board liked that idea of adding that new um, regional collaborative project for any of the six member governments to um, request board approval to put money in there out of their capital shares. But the board uh, wanted to have a super majority vote to do that, um, to be sure that it was a high priority for the region, um, particularly with regard to the um, use of B-list or non-listed uh, capital projects that weren't on the, the PPRTA3 list. So they wanted a super majority vote. But what I missed uh, three years ago was that the establishing IGA uh, mandates that all votes of the board be simple majority of those board members present. So the establishing IGA does not allow a supermajority un unless the, the establishing IGA is revised. Uh, and, and to revise the establishing IGA, it takes all six member government governing bodies by a minimum two thirds vote of each of the six member, each and every one of the six member governments to amend the establishing IGA. So uh, bottom line is there's an uh, absolute incompatibility of the draft board policy 34 that the CAC recommended to the board uh, and the board has now sent back to the CAC. It, it, it can, the uh, draft that you sent cannot be approved because it's incompatible with the establishing IGA, uh, which is superior to board policy. <clears throat> now in the, uh, one of the attachments in my memo, the very last attachment shows the uh, section 615 of the establishing IGA where it says that uh, any action taken by the PPRTA board shall be approved by a simple majority of the total number of votes uh, <clears throat> of those board members present and voting. And you also notice that, well, it says comma, except this may otherwise be provided for in this agreement. If you'll drop down three inches to section 616, it says that the board may promulgate policies well, uh, one argument, the argument I made to Jennifer Ivey, board's uh, attorney, is that uh, the, uh, the except as otherwise may be provided in this agreement re could refer to a board policy in 616. Uh, that uh, the 616 board policy could modify the simple majority. Um, she said, good argument, but not strong enough, so she recommended the board, and the board accepted it that that uh, a, a board policy promulgated out of Section 616 could not uh, superimpose or trump the simple majority vote in 615. So we're back to the incompatibility. Um, <clears throat> so we need to look at options so that the goal today, uh, but no hurry if you're not uh, not comfortable today. Uh, if possible today, come up with one of the options, uh, the five options or a sixth option, um, to refer back to the board your recommendation of how to proceed with this incompatibility that, that cannot proceed as is. Um, so just to review those five, um, amend the establishing IGA to allow for super majority votes uh, for projects uh, such as these. Number two, allow the B-list or non-list capital projects by simple majority vote. Number three, not allow B-list or not uh, non-list capital projects access to the state and federal discretionary grant match fund. Four, have some sort of flagging, high-profile flagging uh, of the use 
of the B list or non listed projects to use the state and federal discretionary grant match fund, but still by simple majority vote, it's um, basically simple majority vote, but some sort of flagging. Number five is to place some wording in board policy 34 that basically says um, we're interested in this concept of a supermajority vote, but not ready right now to amend the establishing IGA. But if and when a member government proposes a B list or non listed, uh, then we'll we will take that under advisement. And if if the CAC and the board like that B list or non listed project, and they want to do a simple majority vote, then they would refer that out to the six member governments to amend the the establishing IGA at that time. Uh, so if and when, so number five is if and when, add some wording uh, that the generality would uh, compose that if and when uh, a member government wants to use this particular uh, grant match fund uh, for a B list or a non-listed, they would apply to the CACN board and then the CACN board, if they, they liked that project, would then say, we like it enough and we want, want to do it by super majority, not simple majority. Then at that time, because we want to do super majority, we'll refer it back to the six member governments for a two or three month process to uh, amend the uh, establishing IJ to allow a super majority vote for the application at that time. Question. Brandy? What's the what's the difference between a phase one and a phase two project when it comes to funding and PPRTAs? A and B list. Well, that's why I'm asking. Yes. Thank you. Our Jim. Phase one and yes. So everybody knows in the whole world that phase one is A list and phase two is B list. No, everybody in the world doesn't know it, but that's what it is. Well, I'm trying to figure out why it's connected with state and federal discretionary grant match fund phase one. It has nothing to do with state funding at all. We're just interchanging phase one and a project. That's just the, the the label that was on the voter approved capital list. Is it's in both the A and the B. In the A, it's phase one. In the B, it's phase two. And if you look at the project list, the the project categories. Um, those were listed when they first came up with project funds. The A list was phase one and the B list was phase two. It was confusing then and it's still confusing. So, um, but I finally figured that out that after looking at the list. But so, <clears throat> so here, here's some thoughts. I talked with Rick about this and because I spent a good hour this morning trying to digest this and the phase one, phase two was throwing me off as well. So we can be proactive. If, if I guess the solution is we can just keep to the simple majority of those present and do nothing. If we want to go beyond that to a super majority, we would have to modify the IGAs. The risk, in my view, Hold if on. we Jim, I don't know that we would do nothing per se. We would probably try to change policy thirty four to get rid of the super majority. We yeah, we would have to amend money. policy right. 34. Yeah. Yes, yes. <clears throat> if if we wait until a project <sighs> comes up and a grant opportunity comes up, we've, Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've had at least two projects that I can think of where we had an opportunity for federal funding and we moved a B list up. One of them was Platte Avenue Bridges. It was the north side and south side, whatever. We moved one of those that was on the B list up and did them at the same time. The other one was the railroad bridges at Fillmore, right? And so it doesn't happen often, but I think if we can use somebody else's money to help us accomplish something, that's a good thing. My concern is if we wait, if we go with the supermajority thing and we wait until that opportunity surfaces, that two or three month of coordination period may exceed the window of opportunity to apply for that. So we can be proactive and go ahead because this fund is relatively new to us in, in RTA3. 
um, is that we be proactive, modify the IGAs now while we're not under a time crunch if the supermajority is the way people want to go. If we want to stay with the simple majority, then we modify policy 34 and we go with a simple majority. My concern is anytime we're moving a voter approved project that's not on anybody's list, but we have an opportunity to do this and it benefits the community, or we're moving a project from B list to A, we've got to be able to make sure we're on solid ground to answer the citizens of why that, why we did that. And so <clears throat> is a simple majority of those present um, enough or in those circumstances where we're, vi we are deviating from voter approved policy on, on a and B list and, or bringing a new project in, do we need to make sure that we're really on solid ground and have a super majority? That that's kind of how I boil this down. Rick, am I off base or anywhere? Perfect. Um, I might suggest uh, that you request uh, input from Brian and Josh on behalf of the city and the county, uh, both as far as turnaround time to amend the IGA, if they have a recollection of how, how long that takes in their process, and also the turnaround time to, to uh, when they first want to decide to apply for a grant, if two to three months is going to be uh, concerning uh, if, if we wait to amend the IGA until there's an actual grant uh, application opportunity. Ryan, you, you guys have a... Yeah. All right, Tony, you got a question? Yes. Um, well, not a question. I actually have some input here. I, um, I agree with you, Mr. Chair, that if we're looking to change what the uh, voters you know, voted on. I, I really think a super majority is appropriate because uh, a majority of a quorum, just people who show up that day, uh, it doesn't seem like it's enough to to uh, represent the the voting public. Um, the other thing I was going to say is on the phase one versus phase two A versus B question. Is there a way to just clean up the language and change it to all one or the other? in the in this policy so that there is no confusion because clearly there is confusion even though we know what it is yeah good question um i'd rather not use phase one phase two but just but but that's what's listed when you look at the project listing in rta3 voter approved projects It'll have street and public safety sidewalk phase one for A, and then phase two is B, and that's the way it's listed on the ballot on some of those projects. And um, those are specific was, projects. That's not the whole list, right? Correct. Yeah, and so it, it's primarily those project funds, not individual projects. Um, it's those those catch-all funds. That's a wrong word. I apologize, but those those project funds that aren't to a specific section or whatever, like pedestrian improvement or roadway safety and traffic, there's a phase one and phase two and that, um, and we had an issue with this with the board of directors a year or so ago when we were uh, um, transitioning over Powers Boulevard and some of that stuff that it came up then too, um, but, um, that's what the voter, that's how the projects are listed and on the voter approved list. I don't know that we can change phase one, phase two. We just got to clarify what we mean by it or just not mention it and just listen A and B list instead of phase one, phase two. Brandy? Tony, it's kind of hard to go back and forth because you're not here, but I just want to clarify, it was voter approved that this particular fund existed, right? So right. we're not doing something that's against what the voters pass, Tony. It's just how it's being expended. So I don't want anybody to think that this needs to come to the board because it's in contradiction to what the voters pass. It's just how those funds get expended is what we're talking about. Yeah, the only difference, though, Brandy, if I may, would the only difference would be if it's a non-listed project 
that we had an opportunity that benefited the region or benefited stuff. We had a grant fund to do it. it you know, I'll give you an example of a B-list project. Woodman Woodman and I-25 interchange congestion is, is listed in, it, on the B-list stuff. If CDOT decided to come in and re-enhance and redo their portion of that interchange, and we had an opportunity to take advantage of state or federal funding to do that, and that's on the B list, that would be a great opportunity to justify moving that project up and doing it now versus waiting till everybody's done. And so that would be a, a good example of, of moving something up. An outside project that we didn't necessarily include, it may be an opportunity where the federal military guys decide to come in and redo something and we're okay with it, but we see an opportunity long range. For example, an extension of Powers Boulevard, um, where are they going to reconnect and, and go down through Fountain and that. That's not on our radar other than it, it's being planned, but all of a sudden if federal funding became available for that, we'd be foolish not to try to take care of that. Um, so that would be maybe an example of something that's not on A and B, but but that was my only comment. Rick? So just to clarify, the State and federal uh, discretionary grant match fund is an A-list project in the regional collaborative section of the voter-approved A-list list of capital projects. So the issue for the supermajority, well, let me back up. So any member government could, if they wish, could move an A another A-list project into this one if they wished with board approval, but the that would be simple majority. But the super majority of when this was being discussed three years ago was if if a member of government wanted to move a B list or a non-listed right. into this A list regional collaborative project, which is just an empty bucket, you have to you have to get board approval to move some of your capital shares into this. Uh, so moving a B-list or a non-listed into this A-list capital project is where the board said only by supermajority. But that's where I missed that one phrase. Uh, that's the only phrase. I've reread re the establishing IGA two more times. And that's the, the only phrase that, that I didn't commit to memory. So uh, I didn't catch it. Jennifer Ivey didn't catch it at the time either. Um, so... Uh, but she caught it this time. So, so, I, so, so the, just, just so to summarize. Question, so the question becomes, is if we're moving B up or a non-listed project at all, do we want a super majority versus a majority of those present? And I mean, that kind of boils down to the, to the question in my book. And, and so, you know, I'm going to come down on how do we answer to the citizens that we made that recommendation or that the board approved that kind of did we do our due diligence in doing that and and a consensus across all of a super majority consensus across all member governments would stand a lot better than six out of 12 people that happen to show up at a meeting in my book that's how i look at it um but you guys share what you guys think oh rick go ahead rick i did um I'm a little confused. Was the unlisted projects on the ballot? I I don't. Uh, I was reading through all of this, and I said, "Where did the unlisted things come from?" We have always been very conscious to stay with A and the B, and all of a sudden we we're introduced with this unlisted. So, are we talking about bringing projects in simply because we're getting help from someplace else? and adding a project that is not voter approved. I don't think that that's what we, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's what we ought to be doing. Mr. We've Chair. always lived with the AB concept and, and voter approved. And now we're talking about bringing anything we want to and putting RTA money toward it, whether we're in help or not. Right. Um, all projects that have gone into the cities, both PPRT1 and PPRT2, City of, uh, City of Colorado Springs program funds, 
all the little projects that have gone into the city's program funds have been non-listed projects. This is a program fund as well. So um, the non-listed projects are eligible to go into a program fund with CAC and board approval. Okay, thank if, you. For if, the you if you prefer not to continue that practice or, or to limit it in some way, feel free to recommend that to the board. That make you feel better? Yes. Okay. And, uh, Ed? Yeah, going back to when we had the I-25 project going on, I think that was unlisted. The board, board voted to approve it, but then it ended up going back to the voters. If it's a very large scale, do we need to do the voters again? Or how does that enter into something like this? You know, because I can envision the South Powers corridor being a substantial amount of money. You know, and even if the board approves it, would we even have the money or should it go back to the voters a second time? So it's just a question I have. But I think uh, that I think that's a good example of the of, of CDOT's gap project. Is that what, Ed, what you're talking about? Yes. With this in place, if that non-listed project were to occur now, or in, as soon as we get to January and get into uh, PPRTA 3, that could be approved either by simple majority or super majority without having to go back to voters and not having to, not having to spend the quarter million dollars with the clerk and recorder fee um, and, and take the risk of the voters not approving the $10 million contribution to CDOT for the gap. Um, so yeah, I, I think that went into the thinking of suggesting this program fund, the state and federal discretionary grant match program fund, um, that went into thinking of establishing it when we were talking about the matrix three years ago. So yes, if the, if the gap uh, weren't there now and just came up in the next in January, we the board could potentially approve some money for it out of one or more um, member government's capital funds without going to voters, good or bad. And and we didn't have the federal infrastructure program back then that we have now. And I think that if I remember correctly, when, when Gail was proposing establishing this account or this this fund or mechanism um because it's an empty pot until we move something into it and the members will have to move their portion of money into it to make it work but i think she had in mind that exact same thing was that we don't know what if the federal government comes down and offers us an opportunity to widen i-25 through the middle of town and we have an impact on that on the city streets and other kinds of stuff we have a mechanism now to do that um without having to go back to the voters and and so i think i i, I was originally cautious about this but the more we've thought about it i thought that it provides us that mechanism as rick pointed out to save that voter fees of having to go back through the clerk and recorder uh, to do that um so i, I do I hear most everybody is okay with the concept that it's a it's a decision on simple majority or super majority? And if it's a super majority, we got to go back to IGA. So let me ask, Gail's got her hand up. Let me, Gail, go ahead. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, my apologies for not being able to be there in person. Um, I just wanted to provide some clarification going back to this matrix when we worked on it at the end of 21. This program is set up specifically to be local match for discretionary grants that can either come from the state or the feds. I do not believe the scenario we're talking about at I-25 would have qualified unless we had gone and applied for a grant or had a local match contribution related to that. So we would have to look at that case. But I think the key is, as Jim, you were alluding to with uh, the IIJA going in place and the increase on grant program funds, we needed to open up an opportunity where local governments, 
and I would say even more so the local governments outside of the city of Colorado Springs, the opportunity, they have the ability to come back and ask the PPRT CAC and board for approval to use PPRT funding for the local match op opportunity. So um, I would say it's not a lot different. I think, I can't remember if it was Jim or Rick brought this up earlier. This is actually not a lot different than what you did do for the Platte Avenue bridges, where one bridge was uh, on the PPRT A list, the other one was not. We went and got federal funds for part of, for the second bridge but we were allowed to combine those projects and use PPRT funding to meet the local match requirement. In that case, it was a simple majority. Um, I think I could probably come up with a couple others that have been simple majority. I just need to keep scratching my head on this, but I would recommend that we leave policy 34, mostly as had, had it was written previously without the super majority vote, because this is always gonna come back to the CAC and board. And if there's a question or concern that CAC and board has that there can always be a recommendation that they get more input from other member governments, or it can be referred to a ballot measure at, at that time and not necessarily go through this establishing IGA amendment process. I don't know that that's actually gonna achieve what I think some of the goal may have been on the onset. Okay, thank you. Um, Brady? I just want to add, it took me a while to find it, Rick, but in policy 34, it also has a federally declared disaster. So if something like that comes up, that's definitely not phase one slash phase two. It's a way that they can use the funds to, again, have a match to a grant to get that problem solved. Um, I would say if this was year one of PPRTA, it'd be a different conversation. This is our third decade. I think by now we've shown trust in each other, trust in our community, trust in our elected officials. And I think it's much easier to amend policy 34 than it is 10 IGAs or however many we have in front of us. So I personally think that we've built trust over 20 years. And then in order to keep everybody moving as fast as possible and not hold any particular community hostage, I think a simple majority works and the amount of time that we get together and all get on the same page is is pretty often and we do a good job governing for this community. So my recommendation would be policy 34 amendment. All right, Carl, just one second. Ryan, did you have a comment? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Carlos? Yeah, just just um, yeah, uh, Carl Spres, uh, Colorado Springs CTAB. I was just uh, the question was uh, was the two thirds, and just again, just clarify. Didn't that just wasn't that more direction from the board? They wanted this, or what? Did it bubble up from here? If it's coming up as a recommendation from the CAC, I do have to concur with my colleagues here that we should just go ahead and just remove it and just defer to the governing IGA, or just be silent on the matter. Um, you know, it's it's over specified. We really don't need to have that here. But if it was something that the board of directors insisted on or requested from us, um, in that case, then I would just say we just refer to the governing IGA and just uh, leave it at that. But I just don't remember who did the board want this, uh, because I do agree that we do have, I think, and this question came up with the, the non-listed ISIS last last time is about the non-listed projects. Um, uh, I, I think the checks, I was convinced that the checks and balancers are there, you know, that we have those there. Um, but I just wanted to find out what was the board's sense on this? Did they want this in here or are they looking for us for guidance on this two thirds? Okay. They, um, go ahead. Um, Carlos, the uh, board and Rick uh, can also add to this is that uh, they were asking us for guidance as far as you know, they, they did not specifically say or tend toward the two thirds majority vote. There was a discussion of both the majority vote and the two thirds supermajority vote. And basically what I gathered from that discussion was that uh, they sort of put it back in our lap to discuss like what we are right now, you know, which would be the best way to go and what uh, you know we would recommend back to them as you know a policy to go forward with 
is that a pretty good overview, Rick? Of well, I'm not. I, I remember um, board chair um, Holly Williams um, indicating she liked the two thirds, but I, I, I don't recall uh, enough other board members uh, <clears throat> indicating one way or the other. Uh, yeah, that, and that's sort of what I gathered. Is it you know? Like you said, I can't remember who it was, but if it was Holly, but the the rest of the board did not tend toward, you know, recommending that we should, you know, look and proceed with the two thirty, two thirds super majority. Mr. Chair, if I could ask uh, Jared to scroll uh, down to the first of the two excerpt pages of the matrix, the multicolor pages. So 11F, um, thanks. So um, the board decision uh, on August 11, 2021, the board supported staff's recommendation for items A, B, C, and D. So C, if, if you'll scroll to the next page, um, Jared, please. Thank you. Uh, The, the paragraph that starts, if the proposed grant, uh, blah, 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 not on either AB, then supermajority. So backing up, so, the, so C is recommending the two thirds. And backing up again, Jared, to the blue ink of F. So on August 11th, the board supports staff's recommendation. I'm, I'm trying to answer Carlos's question. Um, the board supports staff's recommendations for items A, B, C, and D. So C contains the supermajority and it was staff's recommendation. So I'm trying to answer Carlos's question as to who, who initiated the supermajority concept. And then the, and then the board uh, I accepted that and defined supermajority as two thirds of, of uh, directors present. So, um, I'm just answering Carlos. So question. if we use the board's decision in August of 2021, based on um, the, the information below that in the green, the, it sounds like the board wants a two third majority vote on a B list moving up um, is the way I would, the way I would read that. Well, I'd, I'd read it that they accepted the, the staff's recommendation. Now, if the staff or substitute staff for CAC, if, if CAC's recommendation was new and different now, then uh, the board might be in, uh, it might entertain a, a different outcome. But I, I like, uh, go ahead, Brandy. Two things, Rick, since I'm going to assume you were staff since you've been staff forever. Maybe you can explain why it's two thirds. And then I think Tony has a comment after that. Sorry, I don't remember uh, what, how the two thirds came up. Sorry, Tony. <laughs> well, uh, just real quick on what, what was just said there. Um, in many cases, uh, a super majority is considered 60%. But since this is written in as two thirds, that's fine. Um, I would respectfully disagree with uh, Brandy Brandy's comments on um, you know uh, on making a, a just a simple majority, and the reason is actually the exact same reason that Brandy gave. We do work very well together. We do ha have a lot of comedy here, and so I don't think it's really necessarily going to be a problem in the great majority of instances. In the instance that there is division. I think it's important to have that two thirds um, majority because if if there's a a real division within this group or within the board, then that means that there's not, you know, there there's not a general consensus, and uh, and then I would I would think we need uh, the super majority in those cases. Okay. Uh, Ed, I mean Rick. Uh, yeah, that's kind of. Uh... My concern a while ago is that I didn't make the connection between uh, being a program and unlisted 
items. Now I can understand that. I just didn't make that connection. But under that circumstances, this is going to be, for those who believe those are slush runs, this could be a really big one. So I would really like to see the two thirds be the uh, decision on the uh, on the vote. And and so what I was getting ready to say was that we can make a recommendation. I agree with Carl's statement is that we all work, we do our due diligence, and I think we've got. It. I think that is, and Tony mentioned it. We we all do work together, and Brandy did as well. Being the decision was on back in twenty twenty one asking for a two-thirds supermajority vote, I would propose that maybe we reconsider uh, policy 34 um, and make that a supermajority. Now, that's going to drive an IGA, uh, an IGA requirement. Plan B would be to throw, to stay with the IGA simple majority and let the board decide whether they want to go to the IGA redo process um, in terms of making that simple majority to a two thirds super majority. Um, <clears throat> we can go either one of those two ways. I personally think that we should, uh, we could stay with the simple majority uh, as listed in the IGAs now. And, um, uh, just not refer to this or just simply say for the, you know, we've, we've already got the IJs, we all work together. And in the case where we have an event coming up, we can make sure that we notify people, hey, we got an important thing coming up, show up, make sure you're here kind of thing or that. Kathy? Uh, Kathy Heisey, El Paso County. Um, I am actually in favor of, of staying with the two thirds requirement we're we're you know talking about here today uh, the empty bucket and we're we're moving or have the ability to move from one fund to another or we have a special instance that comes up that that is not specifically on the voter approved list. Um, I I think that that is the best way for us to have a defensible position. Yes, we have an extra requirement for this. Yes, we recognize that we weren't, you know, we, we probably didn't know about this particular project when the when the ballot language came out, but it's it's a real opportunity. It's a a taxpayer money saving opportunity and, you know, we know it's important because we have to have the two thirds or whatever we decide on. Okay, Rick. Just, just an FYI, before uh, there's a motion and a second to uh, to propose something, we, we need a motion to reconsider last month's uh, approval of board policy 34 and that that motion needs to pass by a two thirds vote. Okay. Um, we'll come to that. Rich, you had a comment? Yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm on the fence between the two-thirds majority versus simple majority, but, you know, a comment you made that struck me, Brandy, was, you know, trust is earned um, and trust is easily lost, too. So I personally, I, I'm kind of leaning towards the two-thirds majority um, just because, you know, it, it provides that foundational um, approval that, that the group feels that it's very, very important to the whole region. Um, and it's not just a, a wish list kind of project that somebody wants to get done sooner uh, by committing those funds. So, yeah, I can support that as well. And I think that if we go that route, being proactive and getting the IGAs modified prior to an occurrence where we maybe run risks because of a time frame, now's the time to do that if we're going to make that proposal. So, I agree. Proactive would be better than waiting till we have a project because I think you'll impact the local agency's ability to actually use the funding and show a positive uh, financial contribution right. to the grant applications. Right. Right. Brandy. And I'll make one more statement as a former city engineer of Fountain. I'm sure you're all intimately familiar with how the voting works for PPRTA. And Jim, I'm sure you're an expert, but maybe not everybody else does. So the county gets three votes and the city gets three votes. And the three that are left are will and have been and will continue to be divided amongst the smaller communities. So 
I'm here as an at-large citizen, so I get to represent the whole PPRTA, you know, swath of land that takes it up. But for those of you representing the smaller communities, every time somebody comes in, your vote counts less and less. And that's fine. But that means for a super majority, if you bring something forward, you've got to do your due diligence to convince people to, you know, bring that money to the table that your project's important. And and again, that's not going to change how I do or do not vote. But I just want everybody to understand that it's a nine member board, like well, as far as the votes go. So it's very small. It's very intimate. It's like the group we had on city council. So I just want you all to take that into consideration as, as you're bringing money and questions to the table, then um, we're always going to have good relationships, hopefully in the near future with, you know, who's sitting in the commissioner seats and the city council seats, but those six people are the majority. So for the smaller member governments, it behooves you more to have a simple majority than a super majority, just because if you're bringing something to the table that, you know, you may not get as much support for, it's gonna be a lot harder to get that across the finish line. But at the end of the day, you're gonna need the grant, you're gonna need all of the pieces that go with it. So this is gonna be the smallest piece of the puzzle. So hopefully it should work out. Okay. All right, let's, um, anybody got any comments addition to what we've already discussed? I, I'm sensing we're all kind of on the same page. Um, so what I'd like to hear is, do I have a motion to reconsider policy 34 um that we made a recommendation to last last month so kathy greg okay great all right uh all those in favor say aye. aye aye any opposed not seeing or hearing any okay now um so do we change the wording in 34 Can I ask a silly question? If we're not changing board policy 34, do we have to reconsider it? Not that we haven't already voted. But if we're leaving 34 the same, again, well, I'm, I'm oh, sure yeah. I'm not in the majority, but 34 already has the two-thirds majority in it. You're, you're right. So we would change the IGAs, not board policy 34. Correct. Yeah, okay. I, I apologize. That's all right. Um, so um, we, can, we can say that we reconsidered we decided to leave it at two thirds and make a recommendation that the IGAs be changed to reflect the two thirds majority in policy 34. Does that make in simple, simple language, Rick? I, I think um, there's two options for, for leaving the two thirds in and that's at, at whether you're recommending to the board, the, um, Uh, option one or option five, these are Jennifer Ivey's um, words uh, and the options. Option one, is, uh, these are all concepts. And uh, so you would be recommending a concept to the board and then Jennifer Ivey would have to put in the, the correct wording uh, next month for you to look at and go back to the board if the board accepts your concepts recommendation. So five, um, either way, whether you, you want one, uh, you want the two thirds and um, amend the IGA, the, the establishing IGAs now, or number five, keep the third, two thirds, but add a phrase that indicates uh, the intent to request uh, amending the, uh, the six IGAs if and when there's a an application. And, and I would propose I would propose one versus waiting until the opportunity uh, uh, appears. Um, that let's do it now while we're not under a time crunch. If the board doesn't like the going to the two thirds supermajority, they'll tell us otherwise. Randy, did you read all of? One, Jim, that also says allow for voting to be altered by board policy. We haven't really talked about that. Yeah, and so in, in my impression and my thinking is the 34, policy 34, 
which includes the two thirds backs up that we've now done it. But if they want to change policy, so what you're saying is we could approve it now, then they change it later by modifying policy. And that's what one said we're also recommending is that instead of changing all of the IGAs, it gives the board the opportunity to change how they vote on things at their discretion, which goes against what everybody's saying here by wanting that ironclad two thirds majority. Okay. If you do all of number one, then you've gotten rid of kind of what you're going for. And then you give them the option to get rid of that without amending the IGAs. There's nothing that says we couldn't modify statement one. To, Correct. To, That's to, what I'm saying. Let's... To strike that to strike that phase of future policy. Um, I think this is an important enough issue as we've all discussed. This is an important enough issue that if we're going to deviate from the A, B list criteria that we've always gone by, and we're going to deviate from that, it needs to be on solid grounds and a majority approval um, to make sure that that we're accountable to the citizens. And that's what we're here for. Um, and as Carlos and, your, and several have suggested, We've earned that trust. So let's maintain it and keep it and make sure that we can stand up and stand behind our decision making. And that's where I'm coming from. So. Um, Mr. Chair, I had a call. So um, just so we can move this forward. Um, and this, again, goes back to some of the choices here. Uh, so for policy 34, since it's now we're reconsidering it, um, I'm, I'm throwing this out here as a suggestion. Will we just simply strike that last sentence for this program? A supermajority is defined. Just strike that from policy 34. And that this committee recommends that the IGAs be amended for two thirds majority for this particular program fund. So it's a two part request. Just take that word out of this. Just just make me silent on it. And it currently falls back to the IGA. But recommend this committee recommend that we have a two thirds majority for this uh, matching grant fund program. And if and when, if they want to do that, amend the IGAs, then we can reflect it later. We can amend this policy. But for now, so that because, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't want to ha see any any holdups. We have a simple majority now. It's a matter of just amending that to two thirds. It's going to require the IGA. Let's just take that last sentence out. Um, take it back to the board and say, we recommend you guys put a two thirds majority and put that into the IGA. And put some teeth into it because we do want to see those checks and balances there. What What do you think of that? That's a suggestion. I'm Any proposing that. Any comments? Just take out the last sentence of the. So, so you guys have 34, right? Right. Just strike that last sentence, and we adopt 34. Just be silent, and then uh, adopt 34, but also re also refer to the IGA. Refer, have the IGA be amended to have a two thirds majority vote for um for these uh, state or federal discretionary grant match program and, and jennifer i think it probably she has some wording on that um and if they decide to do that if the board wants to say we want to put that teeth in those checks and balances there then they say yeah we have that we could always go back i think take 34 and just clarify that per board per the decision of the board two-thirds majority is required for Okay. to exercise our options here for the for the for, for the discretionary grant match program and it's more of a clarification of what's in the IGA it's just a it's just a repeat of what's in the IGA for the B list and the non listed uh, that is correct okay yeah and i think that was clarified yeah there was the so called non listed that question came up i think last time i said what's this non listed programs but it was uh, for um basically program funds was my understanding and this checks and balances well a, a fema or fema or natural disaster would be non covid or whatever right. yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that was what it was it was a right. contingency it was a contingency an unforeseen contingency right um and so uh, but anyways i'm throwing that i'll just take out the last sentence and we have board policy 34. any that. comments or questions I'm open, I'm open to ideas. I'm open to yeah, ideas on this. Kathy? <laughs> I, I feel like by taking that off, we're we're taking off the two-thirds requirement. And I, I would like to see that very definitely uh, spelled out as specifically toward the state and federal discretionary grant match fund program. Okay. I, I feel like we should leave it on there. Okay. Well, if we, and if we leave it on there, you do realize 
we now have to amend the AGA. Is this yeah. will not be this will not have the the force of a policy until the IGA, until the IGA is amended that either refers back to this board policy or it's amended with the two thirds majority. But we can say, yeah, we can put the two thirds in there, but it will not be enforceable. If I understand correctly from Jennifer Ivy, right? And I'm in favor of amending the IGAs now so that okay. when when something comes up, we're ready to go. Okay. Um, and and truly, I mean, if the member entities are interested in using being able to access this fund they're they're going to do the work to amend the igas to have it in place and if they don't then you know they're probably not really interested in having that option which is fine because it's an empty bucket right right now right okay larry you got a comment um question sort of um you know we're talking about the super majority of the board approving, you know, these funds. But what about the CAC? It, you know, I started looking at this some more, and there's really no definition of our group as far as whether we approve this by a simple majority, or do we also, you know, follow the board with requiring a two thirds majority. Uh, when if one of these items come before us my my first thought would be is that um we're only making recommendation and it's either majority or not it's either yes or no um whether it's two thirds or not so i mean even if it's by one vote um but that's my initial initial reaction was it the cac in its entirety makes that recommendation should we include that in policy 34 saying that you know one of these items uh oh yeah i know i started this whole mess <laughs> when, when i asked jennifer ivy to look at this i know Rick. You, hey, you can be quiet you can be quiet now yeah <laughs> uh, yeah no and it's been a good discussion i, I think this is important um that, that we go through this and um but I don't know that we need to have a two thirds super majority or something of of the CAC. My personal opinion. What what do other people think? Well, do we need to just specify that the CAC passes this by a majority vote on to the board who has to then, you know I just say be silent on the CAC thing. If we if we make a recommendation for, that's a majority vote. That's true. So Let's let's be silent on the cat. Yeah, I not complicated. It, Rick. So I think I'm hearing two potential motions, uh, both of which are uh let's call them one A and one B. One A would be exactly what Jennifer Ivy is showing there. Uh super uh, amend the establishing IG to specifically allow for supermajority votes for these projects and, and or broad and or broadly allow for voting to be altered by board policy. Um, so that's pretty um, general. Uh, now, Carlos, what I heard Carlos say is um, to to put the two thirds vote for the, the state and federal discretionary grant match fund to put that exact wording that that it is shown in the draft board policy 34 to put that exact wording in the establishing IGA specific to the B list, the non listed uh, for the, the this program fund um, it, and and take it out of the board policy 34, but to move that exact language into the establishing IGA. Is that what I'm hearing you say, Carlos? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was what I was, and that was my understanding of Jennifer Ivy that we just couldn't simply declare the, the two thirds majority in a board policy. We need to have something amended in the IGA, and so to put the teeth into the IGA, well, it has to be in the IGA. Is my, I don't think we have a choice really in the matter. If we, if we I mean, we could leave it as is, but this will not have. If I understand it correctly, uh, this is a no go really as far as Jennifer is concerned. That as far as voting is con voting, this is a question of voting. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's a discretionary fund or not. It's a voting question by the board. 
that has to be in the IGA. So it doesn't matter. Anything related to voting has to be in the IGA. It just happens in the specific case, we want to put some guardrails around this, but that those guardrails need to be in the IGA is because it affects the just voting of, 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 of a particular project or program. Okay. So that's what I'm saying is that I think that that's what that's what I'm saying is that okay, we basically so take this out, move it to the IGA and make a make a re recommendation that put this in the IGA, take it out of board policy. Well, you don't policy. necessarily so, have to take it out, Carlos. Yeah. You could leave it there. So is well, is the second part of Jennifer's language in number one uh, or to broadly allow the voting altered by port policy is is that her way? of leaving the IGAs the way they are and then creating a board policy for this particular fund for 34. Uh, so if we put it in the IGA, we could strike that or to broadly allow voting altered by board policy. I, I, I didn't interpret the IGA that way. I, I, I saw policies as like, well, do we buy pickup trucks for the PPRTA? Uh, th this affects voting. That that's the. I guess that's where I'm kind of troubled by uh, what we're discussing here. It isn't just simply decisions on, okay, is this a capital or maintenance? You, we've had that discussion before. This is this is actually more fundamental in how you make decisions. All right, because it's a voting question that should be in the IGA. I don't know. I'm just not comfortable putting a this in a in a uh, in, 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 in a in a board policy. I agree. And when I read the IGA, it didn't just jump out that well, we can end our thought process in, in a board policy. In that case, then just have an IGA that says please refer to board policies, and then we put everything in the board policy, right? Just one line, board policies. And so I think the IGA has it has a more legal strength to it that if it was a, a citizen challenge on this a decision that was a, maybe a large project that this was conscious. It wasn't just buried in a, in a, in a board policy. Um, there, there's a lot more gravitas to, to, to right. the IGA, but, but I do understand that, you know, that could be there, but I am troubled by the voting part of it, uh, uh, being in a, being in a board policy. That's something, I don't know if we have that in any other policies, yeah. uh, um, uh, you know, where we discuss voting of the board in a policy, um, uh, uh, I'd have to go back and look, but this seems like a, an outlier. Right. There's something different about this that's different than other board policies. Right. That's my point. Rick? So I think if we uh, look at number one and look at the second line, uh, well, but let's split where uh, she has the and or. So I think Carlos's recommendation is the two words before the and or. Um, supermajority votes for these projects. So I think what Carlos is recommending, let's call that 1A, is amend, go to the six member governments to amend the IGA uh, for the B list and non listed uh, to be eligible for the state and federal uh, discretionary grant match fund for these projects by supermajority vote for that sentence to be added to the uh, establishing IGA that all six member governments have to agree to. The 1B would be would have no mention of this this uh, um, state and uh, federal discretionary grant management program fund or the B or the non listed. No mention of that. It just adds a phrase. Ask all the six member governments to amend the establishing IGA to allow allow for voting of the board to be altered by board policy, period. Uh, so that's two different sentences uh, to go to, that's, a, that's the 1A and 1B. 1A is Carlos's recommendation to have the specifics of this situation add, uh, amended in the established NIJ, but all six of our The 1B is the more broadly for, for voting of the board to be altered by board policy. And therefore, the draft uh, board policy 34 that that you just reconsidered could then be uh, approved again after the uh, establishing IJ is amended to, uh, to add those six or seven words for voting to be altered by board policy. Am I am I clear? I, I think that's you the are same, clear. I but... think that's the same thing Carlos was saying. I, I'm just 
yeah. repeating it in my own words. Nobody wants the second part. Nobody wants the broadly allowing for voting to be altered by, by board policy. The first one is that Carlos wants the two thirds out of policy 34 and he wants to amend the IGA so it's two thirds vote. Kathy wants the two thirds to stay in board policy 34 and amend the IGAs to a two thirds vote. So those are the two options. You either leave two thirds in policy 34 or you take it out. Both of them want the IGAs amended for the two thirds. Nobody here has said they want to broadly allow for voting to be altered by board policy. I just brought that up because one is the closest, but I don't like the second half. And given that everybody wants the two thirds, I'm sure they're not gonna like the second half of it either. So the question is, do we keep the two thirds in policy 34 or not? Anybody have an opinion other well, than that would be pen, that Kathy? would be pending approval of the IGA amendment? I guess mm. you know. Well, everybody wants the IGA yeah. amended. Yeah, except for me. But Rick I'll had a comment. Oh, my, my no, my question is, why would why would it be necessary to take it out of the thirty uh, thir policy thirty four? What I mean is that just a waste of time and vote? I mean, why not just leave it alone and let's do the IGA? Then they're compatible. Yeah. between the IGA and the and the things that we could leave it in. So the question now would be is we got to make sure that in the wording that this two-thirds supermajority applies to only this fund or are we simple simple majority for everything else? Uh, only this well board policy 34 is only for this fund and then for B for listed B and, and non B and non-listed right. projects. So that needs to be clear so that we're not changing the voting for everything else to be supermajority. So it's just as it pertains to B and non-listed projects under this fund. Correct. Is, is that is that am I seeing I'm seeing heads yeah. nodding? Yeah. Yeah, I think that needs to be clear in the wording of that. Rick. And uh, I don't believe you could recommend board policy 34 as it was previously recommended with the incompatible last uh, paragraph. Uh, I don't, in your motion, I don't think you could recommend to the board to keep board policy 34 as you saw it last month because the, the two thirds vote in board policy 34 is unsupportable. So um, uh, it is incompatible with establishing IGA, therefore it's, uh, it, it it's unenforceable. But, but in essence, wouldn't a modification of the IGA eliminate policy, the need for policy 34? Yes. Well, at least the the uh, two thirds part uh, uh, for the um, for B and non list. And yes. could we just postpone, put 34 on yes. the back burner until we got approval of the IGAs? And if the IGAs were approved, then publish policy 34. Yes, either, either with or without that last paragraph, or whatever you're thinking right. is at the time. So hmm. why don't we why don't we simplify this discussion and let's let's formulate a recommendation that we propose item one um, ending after the word votes for these projects. Um, that we modify the IGA for these projects, clarifying that it's for B list and non listed projects, that we codify that in the IGA first. And then, depending on, and then when that goes, we back that up with a policy 30 or, or policy, whatever number it might be at that point. Um, and one more thing. <laughs> okay. No, we have a like this. But what I hear too is that maybe, uh, and another, yet another, Thing to consider i just thought of this is some sort of trigger clause in policy 34 that you know uh when if and when the iga is amended two-thirds majority that way we just change it now and so there's a trigger clause that basically this becomes in force once the iga is amended and so uh, but if it's not amended you know the trigger doesn't execute and uh it's like removing that that sentence so that's another way instead of just taking it out or saying put two-thirds in there that we we qualify it with some condition um they call them trigger clauses and contracts but that's something else to consider just a third option here either leave it all in or take it out or we leave it in with with a condition trigger and then we won't have to revisit 34 again and and, and it makes clear in here that we want the two-thirds majority for this particular fund Okay. What are what are comments about that? Anybody having a problem with that? 
Brandy? I'm going to restate what you said, Jim, which was basically we take policy 34 off the books for the moment. We redo all the IGAs so that they all have a two thirds, which everybody I'm sure knows that two thirds now goes from five votes to six votes. So we're doing all of this work for one more vote, but that's another story. And then Carlos is just saying we do something different with policy 34, but yours is just take 34 off the table, amend the IGAs, bring 34 back, everything matches. I like yours, so I'm not ready for a third option. Huh? Yeah, I, I just let's just propose we put it on hold, um, amend the IGAs, and then we back it up with a policy that's that reinforces what's in the IGA. Is that is there, I'm seeing heads not is that okay, Carlos? Are you okay with that? Well, yeah, it pretty much accomplishes it okay. there. I was just thinking, could we get 34? Um this, I guess, maybe for the uh, member governments here, it, since this 34 is now kind of on hold, it's not going to create any complications here in the next, uh, what is it, September? I think we got time to get this done. Yeah, we got time. Yeah, I think we have time. That was my concern is that do we have a hurry case where we need to get this on the books now because we anticipate a, uh, a, a grant coming up? And if we don't have anything to address it, and then we have a a delay and i didn't want to introduce any delays that's why i was thinking right. let's get 34 right. moving with a simple majority right and now we're covered until we get the ijs but that that was all it is this timing that's it otherwise yeah. exactly what's been proposed take effect is until rta3 anyway so ryan are you guys tracking anything uh you and josh tracking anything that you see that would fall under this category in the in the near in the next six months or so Uh, not in the next six months for the county, no. My bro, we would utilize this fund in the next six months. Then okay. keep it simple. I like yeah. it. All right, thank you. All right, so let's. Uh, so do I. I don't want to make the recommendation. Do I have a recommendation then that we? Can I just make it? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Number one, we're going to amend the establishing IGAs to specifically allow for supermajority votes for B-list and non-list projects, period. To access this fund. To, to access this fund. Okay. We got a motion. Kathy second. Anybody online got any comments or questions? Good. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Rick? She qualified for this program. Yeah, for, a, for B and, and non-list project. Okay. Uh, yeah, just he needs to specify the yeah, for this. For yeah, we need to modify that to claim for this particular a, a list project of what do you call it? State. Yeah, state and federal discretionary grant fund. Yeah, so phase one what? and phase two. No, <laughs> no, no, because phase one's blessed. It's in a list no. projects are happy and they're in right. for the right. state and federal discretionary right. grant match fund program B lists and non list projects yeah. okay. or and phase two phase two phase two with the non listed correct the and then the B's but just be non listed all right let's work on the wording we got the concept um, it, it, do I have it uh, uh, we had a second Kathy you still okay with a second okay then let's uh, let's vote all those in favor say aye uh, aye. aye. Any oppose? Yes, I'm going to vote against my own motion. I think it's a lot of work for one vote, but that's my personal opinion. <laughs> all right, but it's all in the it's all in the ink. All right, so that's good. Great discussion, people. That that was awesome. Um, that was that was a good discussion, and and uh, I think I can adequately try to explain that to the board next week. Well, if did. not, I'm going to call in sick and Larry's got to do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I so it was asked Rick to we're all, ask Jennifer to look at this. I didn't realize we were going to take a Thanks, bite. Larry. <laughs> so we voted to reconsider board policy 34. We're sending it into the ether. So what do you want that motion to to look like, Rick, to get it to get it off the books? Just I, I would just say. We, that we suspend any further action on policy 34 until the IGAs are complete. Yes. That sounds like a great motion, Jim. Can there, you make there, that motion? I can make that motion. I'd like, ahead, motion that we, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, table policy 34. Okay. Just table it. Okay. Second. 
Second. Okay, we got seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. You guys are great. All right. So now let's go to 7C through H. Um, I'd like, like I said, I'd like, does anybody disagree with, oh, Rick? Well, go ahead and finish your sentence. Does anybody disagree with just, with my suggestion of doing a single vote that we just careful in the wording that the sins are all the same that we approve we rec recommendation to board to approve the changes to all of them right so just to clarify um this is these uh igas are the comprehensive igas and not the establishing iga that we've been talking about for the last uh, little bit so these cover just uh down in the weeds uh, details um that have been in place since uh, the PPRT started. Um, and there, there's one each uh, between the VPRTA and each member of government. And you, you can see with the original four member governments, uh, it's the third amended with um, with Calhan, it's just uh, the first amendment. And then with Raymond, it's the second amendment. Uh, the, the primary uh, change to these is just that uh, Jennifer Ivey wants the PPRTA three capital list uh, added as an attachment. Uh, everything else is uh, uh, grammatical or typos. Okay. Yes, uh, and yes, Barb clarified that board uh, policy thirty is mentioned, which uh, summarizes previous uh, two or three sentences that talk about the contracting process. So it's just an improvement by mentioning board policy thirty. Okay. Everybody on agreement with that? All right. Do I have a motion from someone to consolidate and make a single vote? Larry Tobias, I move that we consolidate the IGAs as we have discussed. Um, let's see, there's uh, seven of them. Six. Six? Okay. Seven C through seven H. Seven C through seven H. I have a second. All right, Rick, we second it. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Not hearing one. Great. Okay. Um, seven I is the monthly change order um, and a property acquisition report for the city. Anybody have any questions or problems with that? Okay. J is the county. Same thing. Property acquisition change order. Any questions or comments? Not seeing or hearing any. Um, 7L, North Nevada Avenue reimbursement update. Uh, it's in our it's um, it's in our packet. Um, any questions on that, Rick? Uh, if you'll uh, drop back to K, please. Okay. Uh, the powers north. Oh, I'm sorry. Powers north reimbursement update. Yes. How did I skip one? Any um any questions or problems with that? Okay, so North Nevada Avenue reimbursement update. Any questions or problems with that? Okay. Uh 7M letter of support for defense community infrastructure program grant application. You Ryan, you yeah. gonna address that? Yes, this is a letter of support from the PPRTA that the city is requesting. Um, previously, the PPRTA supported this grant um, that the city pursued. This is a Defense Community Infrastructure Program grant. This is for the US-24 Peterson project. And then most recently, we were notified that we were awarded over $10 million for that project. Um, as part of the agreement for getting the grant funds, um, they have requested that our um, letter of support specify the specific dollar amount from the local agency. So that is that is the only real change is identifying the four point five nine million dollars of local funds um, on the letter of support. So we ask that um, this be recommended for approval and signed so that we can include it in our further agreements on this uh, ten million dollar uh, grant. Okay. I have a recommendation to support a letter uh, to Jim. So, oh, sorry, Greg. 
looking at the letter here. Um, is the gentleman's name P A T I C K that we're sending this to, or should it be Patrick? There's probably an R in there. Okay. I'll confirm. <laughs> Okay. Um, aside from that amendment, any uh, any further discussion? Um, do I have a motion to recommend to the board that they provide a letter of support for this grant? Greg? Okay. Who? Yes? We have a motion? Yeah, they have a motion. Greg said yes. I need a second. I need a second. Larry Tobias, second. Okay. So Larry, Larry, second. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 And we'll take ten. Uh, all those opposed, say no. We'll I'll take ten million dollars anytime somebody wants to give it to us. Right. All right. Administrative actions. Um, a report on recent board actions. Any comments, Rick? Uh, yes. I, uh, there's an error in my memo. Uh, on number three, uh, Larry Tobias, uh, first vice chair, gave report, not Jim. So I will insert uh, an amended 8A memo that includes that. I have some copies uh, with me if anybody would like a copy of the amended memo. Um, and it's I gave it to Jared. He scanned it, and he's showing it on the screen right now. Okay. All right. Um any, any questions? Sorry, any questions about the, the rest of the memo? Not seeing or hearing any. Um, 8B, quarterly reports from member governments. Again, this is a useful document or within our social networks and other people for status of projects if somebody's um, commenting or complaining or asking questions. So um, any questions or comments from anybody on that? I want to make sure that I thank all the member governments for their input and putting this together. I know it's time consuming, but uh, I think it's a very worthwhile document. Uh, agenda topics for next meeting. Anybody got any? Okay. Uh, what about communications? Anybody got any communications, Carlos? Always uh, something. Uh, if you guys saw in the, the media reports about the uh, tunt, uh, tut, um, extension there at Templeton Gap over on Dublin. Um, this weekend, I went out there on my bike, tried out the new bike lanes. It was actually in the in the, uh, in the um, PR press release. And I'm going to just say that it was, just a real, it was only a tenth of a mile, but I'm going to just commend the traffic engineers for doing a really good job. It wasn't just the bike lanes, it was also the sidewalks, um, the the surface, just everything. It was just a top-notch job. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm just passing my kudos on to the city of Colorado Springs, the contractor, for just a really good job on the tut boulevard extension there that little park there that was going through the um uh near near templeton gap so good job guys that was what i wanted to communicate thank Great. you thank you uh and i've got one um just um the el paso county has a citizens college coming up on the 21st through the 26th of october uh it's about a two-hour session for five nights and part of the day on saturday um it is an opportunity to hear from um, in those sessions from all the major divisions and departments uh, within the county and how it runs and what goes on to include a tour of the jail and the coroner's office. Um, I think for a few bucks, you can probably hold a scalpel and cut on something. No, I'm just eating. Um, but um, it's a great program. It's an opportunity to really get in and, and ask the people that are running the various departments uh, about how things work in the county. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, um, watch for uh, evidence. There's also a website. I don't have it with me at the moment, but um, uh, El Paso County uh, website will direct you to it. You look up Citizens College. But anyway, so I encourage you, if you're interested, please uh, let somebody know. You can let me know, and I'll send you the link if you need to. Okay. Um, but that was what I had. Any other comments or questions? All right. Thank you all for your – oh, Craig? Real quick, maybe I maybe I slept through it. Um, Larry, I remember uh, your motion to consolidate the IGAs and we approve the consolidation. Did we actually vote to approve the IGAs? Oh, did we? Uh, 
I thought we did. Okay. I I just remember voting to approve consolidated. Make approval. I thought okay. we did too. All right. All right. All right. Well, we're adjourned. Thank you all for your time. Great discussion today and insight. I really appreciate all your inputs. Have a great afternoon and a good weekend.